No, it wasn't the pupper. Oh, I mean, it wasn't Tova, it was the pupper. That was basically, um, I hit go live, and then he immediately started borking and being weird about it, and then wanted to go outside, but then didn't want to go outside because it was raining. <laughs> Hi, Stormcrow. Yeah, yeah, it's been so long, I completely forgot the routine. I like press go live, and then I went to the kitchen, I'm like, what am I getting? And I'm like, oh yeah, I need a drink. And then I was like, okay, I have my drink. Okay, what do I need now? And I'm like, I need a snack. Um, yeah, it was a thing. <laughs> But yeah, of course, of course, I'm gonna play First Bite. I, I have to, um, one of my good friends worked on it and even if she didn't, I'd be like, thirsty vampires. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get used to this new hair. I like it, but I'm also like adjusting. So when I see myself, I'm like, who the fuck is that? I don't think I've had hair this dark in at least 20 years least 20 years so it's a change <laughs> oh, hi everyone doing a little dance okay so we're gonna get started in a second but I didn't actually set up my scenes properly because today got real busy at work one of the reasons I haven't been streaming much lately hang on let me get this let me get this here one of the reasons I haven't been streaming that much lately is because my work has this tendency to just um, take over my life. <laughs> um, yeah, like I have this problem, like it's not at all my work. I, I love them, but I have this problem where I'm like, oh my God, I have this great idea. I'm gonna see if I can do it. And people will say things like, that timeline isn't realistic, or are you sure that seems like a lot of work? And I go, oh my god, yeah, it's fine, I can get this done. And then, <laughs> and then I'm just like, okay, it's 7 p.m. and I'm still not done the PowerPoint, so I guess I'm staying a little later. Now it's all gray or falling out. Honestly, my hair's mostly gray too. I didn't, okay, so this is actually a toner. And uh, what's gonna happen is in a couple of shampoos, it's gonna fade to my natural color. Um, I'm actually a level six ash blonde. Hang on, let me show you. So the silvery blondness that you see here at the root, that's actually my hair color. I just did this to get rid of the pink. So it's gonna go back to the ash blonde. A ghost. No. You see? No, you can have a little, have a little self-control, boo-boo. Have a little self-control. <laughs> so yeah. All that to say, uh, yes, I have a lot of gray hair too. It is the way of it when you get to be my age. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But yeah, I'm not allowed to wash my hair for 48 hours, so I'm just kind of like, I guess I'm dealing with this brownishy color for now. But yeah, I, I escaped for today. I'm probably gonna work late tomorrow, but uh, who knows? <laughs> Only the shadow knows. Oh my goodness, sorry. I'm just gonna check this really quick because that's like 30 messages. All right, 95%. So I had like a tiny little patch of gray in my bangs. Hang on, look, 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 let me show you. Witness. Okay, if you look underneath, I don't know if you, like all this, just silver gray. And it's funny because it's like literally the entirety of my bangs turned gray. I don't know why it was specifically there. <laughs> but
but uh, that's what got me. So it's like all here in the bangs and then basically the first quarter inch of my eyebrows have gone white. That's my lot in life now. That's my lot in life. Just... <laughs> now, I don't think I tweeted that I was live on Twitter, but I also don't think I entirely care. Oh, that's sexy though. Argos, come here. Come here. Come on, if you're gonna bork, come over here. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Life's so hard. So, my neighbors next door have this dog that does not stop barking. Like, literally does not stop barking all day, all night. So I generally just play music in my house at like a moderate volume. Like I'm obviously not blasting it, but a fairly decent volume 24 seven. I either have rain noises or I have forest noises or I have some sort of music. When I stream, I can't do this. So I turned off the music. So whenever the dog next door gets sets off, he gets set off too. So what I'm trying to do is touch train him. So when he gets upset and starts barking, I get him to come and touch my hand. Um, but he's being defiant today. It also doesn't help that um, it has been some of the worst weather that I've seen in a really long time. So I don't know how many of you are pet owners, but, <laughs> but I can tell you <laughs> That with dogs, if they don't get taken out for long enough, they get squirrely and then they start doing all sorts of things that are annoying. Same thing happens to me when the chihuahua is under me or next door in my apartment complex. Yeah, it's like you can only, like a dog can only be so good. Thank you, Ami. I appreciate the resub. I was looking at my subs earlier and I was like, oh, I'm down to 15. And I'm like, yeah, but you took like a year off, so. Uh, for the 15 of you that stuck with me, <laughs> I don't know why, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's the other thing. I have new teeth. Check them out. They're mine, but they're 100% straighter. <laughs> Thanks for gift subbing. Thanks for gift subbing. You are an angel and a saint and a wonderful person. Um, I'm going to bring up the game over here and we can keep chatting, but I'm going to try and get myself set up. So is this the version I want or is this the version I want? I want this one. Okay. Let's add the game because I was running late. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty happy with them. Um, I have a tiny, 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 tiny chip on my front tooth. Oh, Sith, I was kidding. I was kidding. Oh my God. Like no one should feel obliged to sub to me like ever. I was actually thinking, I was looking it up um, to see if it would make sense for me to demonetize my channel because I don't want people to feel like they have to subscribe to me. But I found out that I would lose my emotes. And speaking of emotes, if you look, I have added five new emotes and there are four more coming. <laughs> So I hope you enjoy them. They feature the lovely Tova. They feature my face. Um, they are cute as heck. I'm working with a new artist. Um, enjoy them. Yes, there you go. There's there's Tova. Deal with it. <laughs> I um I had a lot of fun coming up with them. Okay, which window do I want? I want this one. Okay. And now we will plunk that into the back. No, I don't want to edit the properties of that. Thank you. I have um, three more coming of Argos and then I think it's two more of me. Anyways, very talented emote artist. Uh, her name is Lisa Love and I found her because she did some of the emotes for our um, for the Dead by Daylight channel. So. I liked her work, so I contacted her, and then she said she would work on mine, and I was thrilled. So I gave her money, and then she gave me art. <laughs> As it should be. Okay. There 
So we're gonna be messy, we're gonna be thirsty. I will undoubtedly have to stop because my dogs are being jerks at some point because like I said, when it is shitty, cold, freezing rain and they don't really get a chance to exercise, like I exercise the heck out of my dogs. Um, it's funny because like when Mike or someone stays over, even other dog owners, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going out for the dog walk. Do you want to come with me? And they're like, well, how long are you going to be out? And I'm like, 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> and people are like, excuse me? So I usually do 30 to 45 minutes, at usually 45 minutes in the morning. And then it's often uh, 45 minutes to an hour in the evening. And then when I can in the afternoon, there's a play break. So my dogs are well exercised and well loved. So when it comes to the freezing rain sleep that we're having here, and I can't do that because it's physically impossible for me to walk my dogs without falling over. Because I don't know if you know this about me, but I have a couple of fatal flaws. A couple of fatal flaws. One of them is despite being Canadian, I cannot walk on ice. I can't do it. I face plant. There was one time where I was in Iceland and like I went to Iceland and I bought, um, what do they call them? The cr the cr uh, they're not cramps. Crampets? Crumpets? The spiky things that go under your shoe. And I still, I still remember going through <laughs> a particular parking lot at a rest spot where I decided it was safer to get on all fours than attempt to cross it with the wind that was hitting me. Crampions, I think that's what they're called, but they are basically cleats. They're just, um, they come on and off in your boots and they're made specifically for like uh, hiking on icebergs and stuff like that. So yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you ever tried to do that with a 60 pound dog and a 40 pound dog. Um, you can't, you can't walk a dog in sleet freezing rain with two dogs. Can't even do it one at a time. Um, so at one point I went out with Tova <laughs> and she like squatted to pee, but it was so icy. She like fell over into a puddle cause it's freezing rain and the look she gave me. And I was like, girl, that is not my fault. Like, I'm very sorry that happened to you. And I'm very sorry I'm laughing, but that's amazing. <laughs> Okay, Sith said, I can't wait to see how you like this game. I loved it. Um, question, is there music in it? Should I turn off my music? Yeah, you're heading for a head injury there. Yeah, there's no way I'm escaping without a broken bone. And considering like I've broken bones just by like going downstairs normally, I really didn't want to tempt fate. So it was like a 20 minute walk in the morning and like a 20 minute walk in the afternoon. The little one, because he's from the Middle East, was like, I don't know what this weather is. I don't want to poop. So that's going to be a problem later. <laughs> Let's see. I can't tell if that's my music or their music. So let me just pause it for a second. No, I don't think there's... Oh yeah, there is some. And we'll use their music. I, I want to get the full experience. The full lusty, horny experience. So did you know that you cannot put horny in your title for a Twitch? It's very quiet. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, I think we're gonna have problems. <laughs> oh yeah, we start in horny jail, we are driving straight through into the thick of horny jail and we are not leaving horny jail tonight. In fact, in fact, I might just live there now. Um, I am who I am. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> That tracks with Twitch and Purity Internet. Yeah, you can't, you can't put horny in the title. You can say murder, you can say all sorts of horrific things. You cannot say horny. So, um, yeah. I was gonna, cause it was originally Thirsty Thursday, former vampire of the masquerade, obsessed 90s goth, who's horny for vampires, 
romances them and lives their best life and probably dies. Um, but apparently horny was too much. We were not allowed to be horny. Maze the warden of horny jail. I'm just standing here with my keys, just like... Ch -ch -ch -ch. First bite is rated 18 plus for strong language, violence, potential player death, blood and gore, optional, sexual scenes, including consensual kink and BDSM. I already got chills, okay? Um, supernatural, emotional manipulation, and other content that some players may find disturbing. Some scenes may contain mild flashing images. Player discretion is advised. It's interesting to see how this is a considerate but also reactionary thing to things like Boyfriend Dungeon or other slightly um, criticized visual novels. And I think it's really interesting how the games industry is evolving to be more transparent with their audience. It's just, it's really neat to me. I think it's cool. <laughs> Nature and Mama Mermaid. <laughs> I'm just like, mom, it's good to you. Just go full Chicago. <laughs> I can use them here since Michigan is getting, oh, 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 yeah. You should get them. I mean, they've saved my life a couple of times. The, the crampets, crumpets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky that I didn't fully burst into song because I love Chicago. I like that it already has a very 90s vibe to it. I'm very excited. My dream is to one day voice a horny visual novel. Hey, Argos Boo Boo, how's it going? Sir Longboy. Nice, Sid. Nice. I'm not alto enough for it I find but I still really like it <laughs> I've got this weird voice that lives not in like high soprano it's like low soprano kind of high alto which means like I often have to change keys when I sing stuff I believe the company who makes this has some more on the way that is awesome but yeah if you ever if any of you so one of my followers I love her to bits, Jeanette. She sent me um, the information for a VR game that was hiring Canadian voice actors, and I was so pumped. Uh, apparently, I missed the cutoff. They they gave me like a week to send in an audition tape, so that didn't work out. But if you ever see non-union voice work, please send it my way. Um, my face is in a video game, like my likeness is in a video game, and I'm in video game credits. I'm trying to fully realize my goal of being a voice in a video game. I have been told my voice is pretty good, so I'm excited to see, and I also come from an acting background, so fingers crossed, maybe one day. All right, let's go into the voice of this. I was a soprano until I became a hardcore hockey fan. That'll do it. Nothing but darkness surrounds me. I close my eyes, desperately trying to blink it away, but there's just nothingness. Should I move my portrait? Can we see things properly? I think it's so, because that's the full sentence there. We'll see if it um, extends at any point during the game. Avoid. I'm alone. Where am I? What am I doing here? How did I even get here? I try moving my legs. Oh, am I already a vampire? I might already be a vampire. Argos, that's my drink. You can't have it. He's like a full head taller than Tova, so he just comes up to me and like puts his head on the table. It's pretty cute. 
Okay, those are my olives, bitch. You're cute, but you're not that cute. As hard as I try to run away, my body refuses to cooperate. I try my arms next. Frozen. Before I can try anything else, a light appears in the distance. There's something else flickering right next to that light. I can barely make it out, but what little I can see is horrifying. Glowing red eyes. Bright white fangs. Blood dripping from sharp talons. In an instant, they multiply, dancing around in the shadows. <laughs> they laugh, a cacophony of demonic giggles, then skitter towards me in an inhuman speed, their movements chaotic. I'm helpless as they close in around me. An aroma of metallic sweetness infiltrates my nostrils, and I'm surrounded. Trapped. Is this... We're already at the horny part, right? <laughs> or is that just me? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> they pounce. Claws tearing deep into my muscles as they grab a hold of me, teeth sinking into my flesh. I try to scream, but no sound escapes. Part 1. Hunger. Okay, who's been peeping my room? Because this looks pretty familiar. <laughs> My eyes jolt open as I wake up in a cold sweat. Oh, it was a horny dream. It wasn't for real horny. My first, um, my first ever creative project when I was in elementary school was basically about a girl who gets chased down by a vampire and bitten and then she wakes up and then my like teacher, even though I was like 10 years old, called that lazy writing and I've never recovered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I see the arcade spirits and all of that. I'm surprised World Next Door isn't on there. Boo boo. Come on. You're interrupting the stream. Do you want to say hi to everyone? You have yet to make your on screen appearance. This is your debut, Argos. This is your debut. This is your moment. Okay, don't be don't be weird about it. Don't be weird about it. Are you okay? He's an erotic basket case and I love him. Yes, my anxiety bean. My anxiety bean. Okay. Good boy, I know, you're so confused. <laughs> is this is this is this life now? Is this how I stream from now on with Argos? Ugh. Concrete Blonde. So good. I think almost every single mix from like the late 90s to like 2015 had Tomorrow Wendy on it. It was a dream. Just a dream. Or closer to a nightmare? It depends on how you feel about getting torn apart by vampires, I guess. Yes, that's right. My heart feels like it's about to burst out of my chest and my mind races over the lingering memory of what I saw. I quickly scan my surroundings to make sure I'm actually in my room. And also alive. Everything is in its rightful place and my laptop is asking me if I'd like to continue watching Death of the Dead. At this point, I should know better than to fall asleep watching horror movies. But I was lured in at the prospect of two hot characters kissing, and I just rested my eyes for a little too long. Oops. Some ridiculous part of my brain holds a kernel of hope that one day I'll enter a deliciously dark world of the unknown and inexplainable. But for now, I'm stuck here. Even my dreams won't let me, what I, let me near what I want. And now that these thoughts are once again racing through my mind, I know it's absolutely fruitless to try and get fall back asleep, but I try nonetheless. I go through every trick in the book. Breathing exercises, counting sheep, writing erotic fanfiction in my head, 
decidedly unhelpful. Surprise, surprise, I'm still awake and blankly staring at my ceiling. Great job, me. I sigh, pushing the covers off my body. There's no point in staying in bed. I grab my phone from my bedside, bracing myself as I check the time. 3 a.m.? I have a piece of olive in my teeth. It's very sexy. Once again, my body has betrayed me by falling into this disgusting habitual cycle. Have a nightmare, wake up, stay awake, rinse, repeat. Defeated, I yawn and stretch my bones as I stand and I make my way to the bedroom mirror. Is this character creation? Is the mirror character creation? I drag my fingers down my teeth and garret my reflection, illuminated by the dangling fairy lights. What's your first name? What is our first name? Mm. Phoebe! <laughs> Grisella. Last name, we'll keep Amsel. I don't have a problem with it. I chose Phoebe because it means like bright one. And there's all that like seductive poetic stuff about vampires being attracted to these like bright auras and beautiful purity. So we're going with that. Amsel it is, I'm fine with that. Let's make it happen. Pronouns, we are she, her. Eye color. Are we making it me or are we making me something else? Let's go. I take a deep breath. I am Phoebe Amsel and I'm going to have a good night. If only my therapist could see me now. A positive affirmation to start my wait. Is it night? Morning? The time between times? Normally when this disjoint, disjointed sleeping pattern curses me, I either read my old collections of goose flesh <laughs> books for the hundredth time or write from my own website. True facts, I only read one Goosebump book in my entire childhood. I had a real chip on my shoulders about them being for my younger siblings and I only read Fear Street. And I quickly moved on from Fear Street to Stephen King. <laughs> The singularly most interesting thing about me is that I have cradled and nurtured a cryptic blog to a light, nice level of internet fame. Ghostin is my main source of serotonin and started out as a tiny forum in an avenue to find and cultivate friendships with those I love, those that love the strange and unusual as much as I do. It still serves the same purpose now, but on a larger scale. Mingling still happens and the original forums are as active as ever, but I had to get creative and produce different types of content in order to keep myself afloat in this book economy. My review of Where, the Wol Where Are the Werewolves goes up later today and I also need to upload that How to Attract Bigfoot video. I thought the Netflix Fear Street trilogy was well done. Yeah, I thought so too. And it's interesting because I watched it pretty much immediately after watching American Horror Story. Oh my God, you scared me. <laughs> that little wet nose, I wasn't expecting you. Um, right after I watched American Horror Story 1989, so they actually like blended into each other really well. It was cute. The crown jewel of Ghostin is also overdue for an update. It's an erotica section, lovingly dubbed the Cryptid Coitus Corner. Gotta love an alliteration. And it surprised me to see it become the most popular part of the website. Uh, would not surprise me. Like, literally my job is just corralling and putting monster fuckers in horny jail. Does not surprise me one bit. I'll admit, I'm no big sh Bill Shakespeare, but it warms my heart to see people coming back for my wide and varied selection of supernatural erotica. Who knew that a horny horror was like catnip to people all over the world and not just me? <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I know. Unfortunately, I'm stuck on my latest would-be masterpiece and all I have is this potentially questionable title. 
mummy milkers. That's a pass for me, Bob. It's a work in progress. I wave it off. I'll figure that all out later and update Cryptid Coitus Corner when inspiration hits. <laughs> I lazily scan my room, trying to hit that motivation jackpot when I pause on my window. The moon is full and bright against the starless sky. An excellent setting for some ominous entertainment. Hmm. Maybe I need to get out, go for a walk, see what early morning Portland offers. Of course it's in Portland. But no joke, I, I've spent several weeks in Portland and it's one of my favorite, favorite places. There's also a street called Morrison and girl loves something named after her. Call me vain, but it is what it is. And that's where tons of food truck lives. So I go to Morrison Street and then I eat all the food trucks on it and then tell them that I'm the CEO of their company and they need to give me free food. And they don't give me free food, but sometimes they laugh and occasionally I get the number of a cute guy who makes chicken and rice. <laughs> that's made by Erotica in Nebraska. <laughs> Fuck, that got me. <laughs> Although now, now that I have my card that tells everyone that I'm a lady, like I'm a title holding lady, you best believe when I'm allowed out in the open again, I'm going to be a menace with that shit. There's enough weirdness happening during the day in the city. I'm sure something's bled over into the twilight hours. With my mind made up, I mosey on over to my closet. What does one wear for a witching hour stroll? Just to the nines, that's me. I'm going out, going out in style. 3 a.m. it may be, but I can and will look my best at every any hour. I dig out the most expensive sweater I own and pull it over the jeans that make my ass look... A sweater in jeans is dressed to the nines? This is the most Portland bullshit I've ever heard. Portland called, they want the 90s back. Um, I pose in front of the mirror, blowing a kiss to Mira Phoebe. I'm sorry, I have a lot of rage about this, apparently. Looking good. I'm a little abuzz with excitement as I gather my bearings. The most radical thing I've done lately is quit my gray-toned office job to pick up shifts at a local coffee shop to supplement the income from my website. It's comforting knowing that there are others like me who have this undeniable attraction to things that go bump in the night, despite the monotony of day-to-day. It's easier to exist when you blend in and squirrel away any untoward interests. It avoids awkward conversations and no one's caught on to my deep dark secrets yet. There was a time in which I felt that my desires for supernatural were something to be ashamed of. Now I'm warm. So let's address this situation. <laughs> and well, Maybe they are in polite society, but after I spent too many brain rotting hours in an office cubicle, I decided I would lean into the delusion and bring some color back into my life. Most people don't see the value in that sort of thing and that's fine, but I can't help something about the occult excites me more than anything else and it's always been that way. I gave up trying to fight it a long time ago. I shake the thoughts from my head. It's no use thinking about that now. I have some inspiration to look for. For mummy milkers, really. I grab my phone, my wallet, and my house keys from my desk and give my room a once over, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Then with a final flash of some finger guns at my reflection in the mirror, I'm out. Okay, so this is my first talking stream since fixing my teeth and it feels different <laughs> so if i start like slurring halfway through you know why <laughs> amazon monster porn isn't gonna write itself it's cool she's 
She's gonna write herself another tingler. Gonna hydrate. Oh, you scared me. It's okay, baby. Hey. You don't need to bark. Come here. Argos, come. Come. Come on. You can bark or you can get a treat. Choice is yours. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right. It isn't long until I find myself standing outside the house. 6969 <laughs> Dead End Drive. <sighs> Behavior Montreal's address is 666. I thought that was hilarious. Um. <laughs> hey nice it's creepy and old and no one actually knows who owns it that's the last town in buster shrugs scrugs sorry <laughs> um right now it's luring me in normally i pass by on a walk to the coffee shop and it's dri and dri Ugh. Oh, start again sentence <laughs> Normally, I pass by on my walk to the office coffee shop, and during the day, it gives no more than a fleeting thought. Maybe it's the desperation for a crumb of inspiration, but tonight, I'm intrigued. For years, I thought it was totally abandoned, the windows all covered with what looked like scraps of newspaper, but what gives me pause is the front yard. It's too well kept. Those bushes don't tend to themselves. Like every historic neighborhood, there's always that one house that has a particularly bad rep. Your life goals. And I honestly don't know why people hire me because one of the life goals that I put down was like, I want to be the woman with the super creepy house and all the school kids say she's a witch. But apparently that was one of many things that led me to get an interview, so it is what it is. I've heard all the stories. I count them on my fingers. Witches who eat children, an axe murderer who slaughtered their whole family, a pack of feral stray cats overthrowing the previous owner. Okay, she jokes about feral stray cats, but I tell you, one of the most traumatic movies I ever watched. People are talking about like The Exorcist or Stephen King's It. For me, some reason, the movie Sleepwalkers, that fucked me up for like five years. I don't know why. I don't know how. And like, I would tell people about it and they'd be like, cat people? I'm like, no, not the movie cat people. Fuck cat people, Sleepwalker. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Cats are scary is the TLDR. I love them. They're beautiful, but they will fucking hurt you. They will kill you. They are tiny little killing machines. <laughs> I think I also saw it when I was a little too young, but like all I hear is the end. Yeah, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I'm like, a lycanthrope's hideout. And my personal favorite, vampires. I always thought that it was a joke to scare away kids to stop them from playing on their lawn, but, oh, if only it were true. I find myself just standing here staring, tempted by the house and what might linger inside of it, which isn't the smartest move. In October, come on, October in Portland, it's like, 10 degrees out. Come on. You have a sweater on, bitch. You're fine. Check out the movie Stray. It's the cat version of the birds. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know if I can handle it. So because of the movie... All right. 
I don't want to accidentally get graphic, so I won't say it. Um, but I will ask. I just want to ask chat because I'm genuinely curious. Have you ever had a nightmare so bad that you remember it with like crystal clarity and like weirdly specific details? Because I could say I've had about six of them in my life. Six of them that I remember the smell, the taste, like it's so vivid. I almost have to remind my brain that it's not real. And I think it's only happened like four, five, six times in my entire life, but I can still close my eyes and recall every single detail. And sometimes it'll come back. So Sleepwalkers gave me my first one. Yeah, exactly. Like I was like, God, what year did Sleepwalkers come out? I never thought I would talk this much about that movie, but let me check because I'll be able to tell you how old I was when I saw it and that might give it... No, it's not 2017. That is not the movie I'm talking about. Sleepwalkers. Uh, 1992. So 1992. <clears throat> I think I was 11. I was nine. Okay, I was nine years old <laughs> at the time. Which actually explains some things. It has some great cameos like Mark Hamill at the start. I used to have the most intense sex dreams about Star Trek. For some reason, it was always I was on a ship. I was on one of the Star Trek ships. It was always like, I don't know why. I mean, I'm horny for vampires, but apparently my brain was just really into that Star Trek jam. Okay, I'm um, talking a lot about personal things. But yes, nine years old when I had my first super, super traumatic nightmare that was brought on by sleepwalkers the first time i was genuinely terrified by from a movie like disproportionately so and it fucked me up for several days was ringu i saw ringu in 2000 it was the japanese version i went to a film festival i knew nothing about it i just heard that it was really scary and girl 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 it fucked me up Jazia or Kira May? minder you're showing your age i'm old enough that it was tng at the time it was fucking TNG and TOS. They were not around yet when I had my sexual blossoming. They only came into fruition in my mid-teens. <laughs> but both. Both. But I love how the internet has come to embrace the sexual diversity of Deep Space Nine. Like, people have just now come to accept that Keiko and O'Brien are a polyamorous couple. Um, that... <laughs> Bashir and Garrick are totally boning that Bashir is also with um, Keiko and O'Brien so it's kind of a triad and then at some point Kira dips into the polyamorous puddle like basically Keiko and O'Brien are like the really cute neighbors next door who like invite you to a key party and next thing you know you're having sex with everyone oh I've never seen paranormal activity in October in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, I told you, girl. It, you have a sweater. You're fine. It's dark. I'm cold. It's also definitely about to rain. I should go in. The words fall out of my mouth without thought. It's just pure impulse, succumbing to the mystery tugging at my curiosity. I shrug to myself and look around. No one's here to witness my petty crime of breaking and entering. With my journalistic integrity intact, I will will myself to stroll up to the house. The porch groans loudly in protest as I step on it, and my hand reaches out to the front door. I apply gentle pressure to the door, just swings open with a deliciously spooky and decidedly terrifying creak. That's not what I expected. Was it just left ajar like that? Damn, I was very prepared to use the lockpicking skills I picked up from all the video games I've played which totally would have worked. As the door swings open, a slight breeze flows from the inside like someone forgot to close the fridge and let out the cold. I shiver against it. Then finally, I hesitate. Should I really be adding trespasser to my resume? Why did my caption stop working? Hang on one second. 
it's very important. Test, test. <gasps> What's happening with my captions? <laughs> my days playing Skyrim have prepared me for this moment. It's true. It's super true. Okay, I'm just gonna change this and then we will change it back. Hopefully that'll work. Yes, there we go. Captions are back. Sorry, it's really important to me because like not only is it good for accessibility and like it's important to have, um, there is a particular s streamer friend whom I love who's hard of hearing and I always, you know, it's hard, it's, it's shitty that sometimes you need the face of someone to contextualize struggles but I also think that's why it's really important that everyone have really diverse friendships and people in their lives because you know it's easy to brush it off and be like oh well that's a pain in the ass but when you know someone who specifically benefits from two minutes not even two minutes two seconds two seconds of forethought and it makes all the difference you know what I mean you do it. I watched a great video called Star Trek has always been horny. <laughs> oh my God. No, Star Trek has always been super horny, super horny and not just Kirk horny. Like, Am I actually doing this? Yeah, don't be a coward. I mean, it's weird to break and enter, but I'm an erotica writer. I have my sweater on, it's cold outside. Let's just go for it. No, TNG is wrong. The holodeck is for sex. <laughs> this is almost certainly what she was talking about. Listen, Phoebe, if you go into this house and you do it right now, think of the possibilities. If there are no corporeal beings, hopefully there will be a hot ghost that won't make me want to shit my pants. Hey, Tumor, we were just having the longest discussion about how horny Star Trek is. We summoned you. We summoned you, baby. Tumor Boy is like probably one of my new favorite people on the internet. And it's so great because like, I know a lot of people that I can nerd out about when it comes to like Star Wars and things like that. Tumor Boy, he's my man when it comes to horny Star Trek. Well, Star Trek, I make it horny, but Star Trek in general. That's what they get for <laughs> Sex and O'Brien and Julian's Nazi killing sex. I'm still here for the Keiko O'Brien polyamory love triangle. You're not the only one making. No, but I like to feel like I am the queen of horny jail. Because I was talking about how when I was younger, for some reason, all my star all my sex dreams were Star Trek themed. Like they happened on a ship. <laughs> Garrick made it horny for everyone. It's true. Garrick was a moment for me, and I'm like, why is Lizard Boy hot? The only monogamous person in DS9 is Cisco. I feel like Jake would be. I feel like Jake, Jake would take after his dad. Worf is probably default monogamous, but Jadzia would totally rang him into a threesome at some point. You know she would. Okay, I'm going to focus on the game instead of warning you talking about Star Trek. Oh, if my father could hear me now. 
three some try a five some it's like and there's like a mariachi band as well <laughs> she's like oh come on just just stand there and throw things at him you'll like it Okay, I can just, I can see that in my head right now. Okay, well, we can do both. We can do both. I'm sorry. I will focus. I will focus on the horny vampires. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I have a chance to eat dinner, so I'm eating... I don't know, for some reason I thought almonds and olives would be, like, very vampire-y, but then I didn't have what, red wine, so I was like, ugh, you only got half the equation. <laughs> okay, but Quark's Klingon wife. Oh, I'm trying to remember her name. All I'm thinking is Lursa and Bator, but those are the Duras sisters. Um, what was her name again? I loved her, though. Grilka! That was it. Grilka. She's the best. She's amazing. Once I get inside the house, my teeth start shattering. Chattering, not shattering. Yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't remember Grilka. That was my bad. I'm I'm a strangely like all the alien characters are so much more interesting. Like I really like Grilka, even though she wasn't a huge part of it. Um I was always a Zial stan. Um, but like the first two actresses for Zial, I didn't quite like the last one, but she got the most airtime, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> The first episode of Kirk TOS had a salt-eating, shape-changing vampire. Oh, okay, so we are on brand. We are on brand. It's cold. Like, really fucking cold. Someone forgot heating exists. It's an abandoned building, woman! What do you want from it? I think, I think I'm in a small foyer, but it's hard to tell without the soft glow of the moon outside. I can barely see my hand in front of my face. I pull out my phone, turn on the flashlight, and inspect my surroundings. As I shine my light around the room, I see this place appears to be lost in time. Nothing seems to have changed since at least the 1800s. Not the furniture, the wallpaper, or the smell. Tova has decided she's here to ruin my horny stream. Tova? Boo boo? Do you have to go to the bathroom? Yeah, okay. That's a bathroom. We're taking a bathroom break. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I swear we'll play this game. Yes! Arrête! Je m'en viens. Okay. Just a minute. I. All right, I have returned. <laughs> Who would we ship with? Because I want to say Jadzia. I feel like I'm too much like Jadzia that we would actually be like bad for each other. I would totally fuck her though. I just couldn't date her. Do you want to know who I'd really, really really fall hard for you guys you'll never guess it you'll never guess it <laughs> i date morn i'm very much like jed z in the sense that like literally anyone you say i'd be like oh yeah i could date them no, yeah, umak for days, fine. <laughs> but I do, I do have a favorite crush. I 
<laughs> uh, General Martok. I will not apologize for it. <laughs> He's amazing. I love him. I even love the way he like hate loves his wife. Like, ugh. Everything about him. I would be his mistress. I would let him break my bones. It got really weird when my younger sibling named their dog Martok. But yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a Martok. There's a Jakar and there's a Palpatine. Yeah. All pets in the Morrison household. Okay. I'm sorry, I'll get back to the game and I'll stop talking about characters I would have sex with. <laughs> I mean, those are great names, too. I had, um... We had a Cornish Rex that had sex with a Siamese cat. And then um, their litter, we all named them after DS9 characters. Because we had, we had this one that came out like basically an orange point Siamese. So that was O'Brien. Um, and then there's this one cat that came out that was half wrinkly like a Rex. Like on its face a little bit. So that one was Kira. She was uh, a Calico. Because Calicos are feisty. Um, there was a seal point, so a very dark-faced, um, Siamese that ended up mixed with the calico, so he had a bumpy forehead, so he was wharf. Like, we, we had a whole, <laughs> we were a whole bunch of stunning, stunning kitties. Okay. <laughs> All right, Sith. I'm gonna make it happen. They're beautiful. Yeah. I had a calico and I had a tortoise shell. Um, for some reason, I always end up with three colored dogs. Well, three colored animals, because Toba's three colors. And then Argos, I adopted without even seeing him, because he was an extreme retro situation, and he's, he's three colors as well. What? Check my tweets. God damn it. What's happening? No! Oh my god. I love you and I hate you. I don't even know how to react to that. No, 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 you didn't miss anything. He's just... Uh, Superboy's just sending me pictures of my Star Trek crush. Because I have a problem. Big problem. Vegetarian meatloaf is like a thousand times better than actual meatloaf because it tastes like things rather than just meat. And I like meat, don't get me wrong. I just, um, I'm not into like the meatloafs or casseroles or anything like that. I prefer like a slab of really good meat and then like vegetables. 
That's how I like to enjoy my meat. I don't like to make it complicated. I like simple, clean, elegant food. I guess that's the French in me. I guess I'm just a snob. All right. Let's continue to be horny, but horny about vampires. <clears throat> center refocus all right voice acting may is here let's make it happen unpleasant as it is it's an aroma that intrigues the rest of my senses beckoning me to find the rest of the secrets packed within these walls at the end of the hall i see a light sneaking in through the crack of a half open door whoever's here if anyone at all must be in there we're playing First Bite Julia. It's a vampire romance game visual novel. Um, I don't know if you know her, but um, Anna, uh, she worked on uh, Arcade Spirits, World Next Door, a bunch of other things. Uh, she's she's one of the people who is behind it. And uh, I'm always thirsty for vampires, so we're going to go see if we can get laid. And possibly die. Preferably both, actually. I hold my breath as I listen intently for clues, and sure enough, there are the signs of life I craved. I hear what sounds like muffled conversation, and then a very clear, Fuck you! I raise an eyebrow, now this is something worth investigating. As I take another step, the floorboards creak loudly under my feet. Shit. I pause, silent as a grave as still as a statue and pray that those muffled voices didn't hear me there's a tense moment before the voices continue and i release the breath i was holding i passed the stealth check maybe i don't know if any of you live in an old house with hardwood floors my house was built in the 1800s and it has hardwood floors you cannot move soundlessly through it like i'm a pretty light stepper and I've memorized where most of the creeks are, but like sometimes I'll be tiptoeing past my dog's crate at like three in the morning to go for a pee. And then I hear like, Kurr! and I'm like, fuck. Have you played when the night comes because you can be horny for vampires there too? No, I haven't. I haven't played anything besides Star Wars, the Old Republic and Final Fantasy 14 in the last six months. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It is what it is. I've been unfortunately way too busy. But I want to bring back Thursday Thursdays and I want to... I want to play more games, so I'll put it on the list. Oh, now I'm thinking we need to play a Star Trek game for Thursday Thursdays. And I just talk about how, like, I never liked Tom Paris, but for some reason my teenage brain always wanted to fuck him. It was a weird time to be alive, let me tell you. Continuing to sneak along the dark corridor, I creep closer and closer to the illuminated room. And then I'm right outside the cracked door with my back against the wall. Now that I'm closer, I can hear more clearly. Three. <laughs> when Tuvok is right there. I'm sorry. I am not a Tuvok stan. Although, okay, so me and Garrett Wong had like a weird brief weekend affair and I always been horny for Harry Kim ever since. I'm totally getting it for you when I get home? Okay, awesome. That sounds... I think the only reason Vulcans don't do it for me is I'm such like a deeply empathic emotional person I feel like some of the things that are my absolute core strengths as a human being they wouldn't understand or appreciate so I have no attraction there yeah it's Neelix just call me Kess <laughs> three 
Three distantly different dulcet tones echo in the hallway. Do you smell that? Everything goes deathly silent. Then... It smells like human in here. I freeze instantly. There it is again. I'm just wafting human at him. <laughs> I keep telling you it's your dirty cops piled in the sink. You're just as shit at doing dishes as you are playing cards. Yeah, like, I think you're right, Sid. I feel like... I feel like it would be a cross between them and the super awkward Garrus romance in Mass Effect 2, where, like, the Vulcan's like, I'm gonna do research on what human mating rituals are like, but he accidentally sees, like, Ballbusters 9000 and, like, ends up doing some, like, weird, super perfunctionary porn thing. <laughs> at least when he sucks at cards, there's a chance he'll have to take his clothes off. Every day the cups keep piling up and not a nipple in sight. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what happened to Star Trek canon when I was busy working? <laughs> oh. Okay, I haven't I haven't seen the latest season of Discovery, so shh shh shh. Chat, go away. Haven't been watching it. Been too busy. Everyone spam emojis so I don't see anything if there were spoilers. I love disco so much. I've been waiting until I can actually appreciate it. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that then. How did I not catch that? In my head cannon. There are some very strange genitalia in Mass Effect, I won't lie. God, I don't remember that at all. Maybe I have to go back and watch Disco. I was so distracted by Jason Isaacs, I couldn't process anything. <laughs> Jason Isaacs is like one of my ultimate daddy fantasies. Oh, I don't I don't go to Tumblr. Tumblr's a dark place for me. See, that's it. So if Giorgio was on Green between her and Jason Isaacs, I was just in a bisexual panic the entire time and I couldn't process it. <laughs> yeah. So many of my friends would be like, Who? That guy? And I'm like, Yes, that guy. Oh, fun, Julia. I'll check it out when it comes out. <laughs> For me, um, I think the first Jason Isaacs movie I fell in love with him in was, um, there was a version of Peter Pan in the early 2000s, and he played an incredibly loving, doting, bumbling Mr. Darling, and then he played Captain Hook, and I was like, oh, oh, both of these fucking wreck me. Yes, yes, I have seen him. Oh, Yes, I've watched Sex Education. And again, again, bisexual me has a problem with Jillian Anderson and Jason Isaacs being in the same universe. Like, I cannot deal with it. But Sex Education I love. It's very, it's very charming. I showed it to Mike and Mike was like, why do I feel like you were Maeve? And I'm like, I was 100% Maeve. <laughs> There's no better p depiction of high school me than Maeve, actually. Down to the nose ring. Down to the nose ring and pink hair.
All right, we've been living in horny jail. Let's let's address this nipple situation right here. First of all, I'm good at everything. A warrior like me just can't waste his time on trivial things like cards and dishes. Okay, just sanity check. Y'all can hear the dialogue pretty well, right? Do I need to turn it up? Do I need to turn myself down? Yes. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure. Because visual novels don't usually have voice acting, so when they have them, I want it to, like... Okay, cool. Gotta save my huge brain and muscles for more important things. Second... I hear the sounds of someone inhaling deeply. My nose never lies. I smell human. The speaker's words hit me like a thunderbolt. What had I been thinking, skulking about in the hallway and eavesdropping on whoever lives here? Could be a trope of axe murderers for all I know. Have we already forgotten the time your nose led us straight into that werewolf house party? That sounds like a fucking bop. Let's go there next. Somehow, despite the growing panic in my chest, the frame werewolf house party makes me snort. I cover my mouth with my hand immediately, as though it somehow might somehow take it back, but it's too late. Well, well, well. We might have company after all. Go on. Show your I can't describe the feeling, but it's like I'm being compelled to step from the darkness and into the light. My feet propel me forward of their own accord, carrying me around the corner as I resign myself to the fact that I've been caught. What I see when I enter the room jolts me right out of my numbness into a state of shock. It's gonna be three horny people. Yes! Yeah! Uncontrollably, my heart skips a beat. How do we choose? Oh, it might be the non-binary legend on the right. I, whoo, oh, whoo, whoo, <laughs> Is it hot? <laughs> I rarely see visual novels with this sort of painterly style and like, whew, ha, mm, ah. the three voices. <laughs> I need a dusk fan. I need a dusk fan. I need an adult. <clears throat> Okay. <sighs> the three voices that I heard are matched by three equally mesmerizing faces. They're so beautiful it almost hurts to look at them. And by the look of their slightly perturbed yet also slightly intrigued expressions, I've clearly interrupted something. Using my big galaxy brain, I survey the situation and decide on my next move. There's a mess of playing cards and glasses of red wine strewn across the table in front of them. The way they're holding their cards reminds me of an old spaghetti western. Right before there's a shootout in the saloon. The three of them stare at me in a way that makes me feel like I'm a ham ready for carving. None of them speak. They just evaluate me with this bizarre hunger in their gazes. I should say something to shatter this long, incredibly awkward pause. Oh yeah. So, I appear to be lost. The words are barely out of my mouth before they leap towards me in inhuman speed, knocking me onto my back and pushing me down against the red... Ooh, I added the red. The carpet. The breath leaves my lungs and my hands burn as bare skin and textile collide. See? I fucking told you I smelled human. Never doubt me again. 
No treat for you. <laughs> Just for getting it right, Elias. Elias? Yeah, Elias seems correct. Assuming we all want to call dibs, should we rock, paper, scissors? Okay. That is a Vampire the Masquerade joke, LARP joke. And it's amazing. I want to kiss everyone right now because I was a huge LARPer back in the 90s, especially Vampire. I'm so excited. And horny. I hope my dad isn't watching the stream. No, but like for real. Dibs, really, Laurel? Can't we just share? We haven't done that in a while. No, Valeria. As the oldest, smartest, and hottest, the human is mine by right. I feel like a piece of furniture out for auction at a swap meet. Am I into that? I'm completely mesmerized by every hand movement, every turn of their lips, and every glance in my direction as they bicker. My heart races and I can feel myself getting unnaturally hot despite the freezing temperature of the house. Don't be greedy, Illy. Think of all the fun we could have. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> It's okay. He probably would have turned it off if he watched it. But I still like that one of the first times my dad ever tuned into my stream, I was being spanked by Iron Bull, and I'm like, Hi, Dad! This is a great moment for the Morrison family. Part of our heritage. That's all it is for you. Fun. You two enjoy those prepackaged little blood bags. But a hunter like me needs to feed. My fangs haven't pierced flesh in so long. I think these are supposed to be scars. Interesting. The biggest one has me pinned to the floor, but despite their threatening words, they don't exactly seem intent on killing me right this second. Even lying prone on the ground, the first thing I notice is their teeth, or rather the deadly points of their canines. Their skin doesn't have the same plumpness or glow that mine has, almost like their capillaries forgot how to refill with blood. And the mirror behind them has no reflections. No. This cannot be happening. Can it? There's no way they're actually... Vampires? The world... The word crashes out and they turn to me. Hungry, unforgiving, feral. The one they called Valeria grabs a hold of my chin with a delicate hand, but there's nothing delicate about the way she holds me. Looks like we have a fan on our hands. Mmm, it looks like we do. Her dark brows are pinched when she leans in closer, her head tilted like she's sizing me up. You interrupted us, kitten. And Ilias here was just about to take his shirt off. What shirt? It's like a piece of fabric. Taking your shirt off is for losers. And I was clearly winning. I don't have to dream about winning. Winning is all I do. Look at these muscles. My face, these cards. The trio continues to bicker amongst themselves and I just lie here watching. Vampires are just myths. Monsters made up by confused historians and then embellished by story makers trying to make us feel something. There has to be a simple explanation for these three. But now is not the time to get myself worked up into my own little fantasies. No, now is exactly the time. You do it, Phoebe. You get that. It's probably just some sort of kinky vampire LARP event. Cosplayers who lift or something. So there's actually a group called Cosfit that are... <laughs> 
a group of cosplayers that are super into um, fitness and bodybuilding. The costuming and props are serious. Movie magic fangs. Even the red wine in their glasses look like real blood. It wouldn't surprise me if they've rented out this house for their own pleasure. <laughs> I don't know! There's no way you're real vampires. Who are you? A deadly silence fills the space between I uh, who Ha! Ho, okay. <laughs> the libido is fucking shit up. Let's make this happen. Okay. Focus, center, Phoebe, and scene. A deadly silence fills the space between us as I gracelessly interrupt their quarreling. Valeria's hand gets tighter on my chin. Ilya's body feels heavier against me. Who are we? You don't think we're real? I don't give a shit what she thinks. She'll know we're real enough when her blood is sliding down our throats. Hmm. Too much talking. Not enough killing. Ilias lunges for me at a speed that my eyes can hardly register, and I'm in such a broken state of shock that I say the first thing that comes into my head. Parlay! They all pause immediately, going as still as statues that they look at me with a distinct mix of disgust and confusion. Parlay. Yeah, bitch. White flag. Do we look like fucking pirates to you? <laughs> <laughs> the sequel is called First Bite Pirate Edition. <laughs> you are what you eat, I suppose. Yo ho ho. I'm sorry, I, um, is there a vampire version of Parlay where you have to let me explain myself before you kill me? That green shit they put on your food to make it look nice? Parlay, not parsley. It's some bullshit the human picked up from the movies. You know, Parlay. Hmm. Clearly. Elias does not know. Besides, it's bold of you to assume we have anything to talk to you about, human. I could sprinkle parsley. myself in parsley for Elias. Like, I wouldn't date him, but I would definitely let him destroy me. Although, he seems a little simple, so I could probably destroy him. I find it interesting that they chose to have the non-binary character unvoiced so you can sort of project your own idea onto it. But I kind of wish they were voiced. One of the guys here is big into that. No padded suit for his. He man, yeah. There's um quite a few here. They're um I can't remember the name, but they they often do superheroes and um they do a lot of charity work for like children's hospitals, or at least they did before pre-pandemic. And I always found it really aspirational, you know. Like I really do believe any size is beautiful, and I am not anyone to shame your body your body does what it needs to do to keep you alive it's beautiful it gives you orgasms you can eat delicious food you're perfect just the way you are but i do find it myself quite aspirational when people have that dedication to something that makes them happy you know whether it be art or cooking or you know conditioning their body and and i think it's really beautiful how some people have used it to transform their own life yeah it's laurel 
Am I doing Laurel's voice? I feel like I might not do it justice. Honestly, Laurel, who hasn't eaten a ship full of sailors? Oh, now you've got me thinking about that time in Central Bay. She gives my head an idle little shake, her fingers digging into my cheeks and making my mouth purse as she stares wistfully into the distance. Oh, pristine beaches, expensive wines, obnoxious tourists no one will miss. As they once again continue to talk as if I'm not there, my gaze flits between their gorgeous, terrifying faces. Desperate to find something I can use. All those years of mesmerizing, mesmerizing, memorizing books and movies and useless video games and cryptid lore has prepared me for this moment. I rack my brain for what little information I've managed to learn about these three so far. The biggest one, Elias, is apparently the oldest and seems to believe he's the best of the three of them in every way. He's probably susceptible to flattery. Valeria, the most petite of the trio, seems to have a penchant for luxury. If the glazed look in her eyes when she mentions Saint Tropez is anything to go by. And finally, Laurel, the hardest to read of the three, gives me the distinct impression that they might be open to being entertained. I won't have much time to try whatever it is I'm going to do, so I better choose Vampire fast and just go for it. Laurel, you seem like the type to appreciate a little entertainment. You know, dinner and a show. A light sparks in their dark eyes. I have to hope that's a sign of genuine interest, however mild or controlled. And you've got all that from five minutes of eavesdropping. Oh, Laurel has a voice now. That's interesting. Because they didn't before. Surely not. You must be a truly gifted psychic. A joke, clearly. But there's a soft lit to their casual tone where I'd expect to hear sarcasm. Should I be worried? Oh, incredible. The things that fly over your head, Illy. I'm being serious, Val. A clairvoyant has arrived to teach us about ourselves. That voice is entirely too hot and I didn't know. I didn't- What do I do, chat? What do I do? How do I make this happen? Just hang on. What's going on here? <laughs> I died a few times first though. We'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay, so the so I'm just rearranging some stuff here really quickly on my dashboard. Cuz I'm like really flustered and stuff. Why is my microphone suddenly not picking anything up again? It's freaking weird. I wonder if my captions need to be redone.
Yeah, there's something really weird going on with my... Oh, okay, I'm back. I'm back now. Testing? Testing? All right. This seems fine. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, chat. Do we want to hear me do silly voices for the other characters? Or um, should I just do Phoebe? I desire opinions. I'm going to take this moment to hydrate because I am a thirsty bitch. Okay, because sometimes they're not fully voiced. That's the thing. I didn't want people to think I'm slacking. Tumor, you weren't here. I was so mad. So I got shown a script for a VR game and they were looking for non-unionized Canadian actors. And I was like super excited to audition. And then like less than a week later when I went to submit, like I went to um, get the script so that I could record the parts, it was already taken down. I was like, God damn it. No, don't be sorry. Like, I just meant for, like, the couple of lines that aren't voiced. Yeah, I know. And I I had done, like, I felt really, 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 really good about my test reading. But then I wasn't able to submit it. And I'm like, fuck. Because that's, like, that's my dream. That's my one dream. I have my credits. Day to have my voice in a video game. Like a goal. I might be able to make it happen with Dead by Daylight, but it's mostly just screaming. Like, it's not actually acting. Okay, if the microphone's being weird, you know what I can do? Can change to another microphone. If it keeps cutting out, just let me know, chat. And I'll switch it. Yeah, it's so rare to find non-unionized work especially for a canadian i'm so mad i the only reason i waited to record the audition was i wanted to wait until i had more sound muffling stuff because my studio wasn't fully set up yet it's awful I think you want to prove yourself. Tell me what I'm thinking, right? God damn it, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna say the wrong thing. Boring. Not every moment can be a rave, Illy. Can if you try hard enough or do enough drugs. Where were we? Ah, yes. You were going to read my mind. Okay. I'm not going to think that much. I'm just going to respond. Me thinking about you thinking about me? Uh, what? Is that supposed to be some sort of clever trick? Well, I 
Perk up. Watching Laurel as though they were a lottery announcer preparing to call my winning numbers. It's not... not clever. <laughs> That's right, give it girl. Well, NB. NB Liege. Ugh. Hey, I read your mind. To varying degrees of success. Success is still success. So now, you should read mine. Are you sure what you hear might frighten you? Bring it. I'm thinking about. <laughs> Laurel regards me with tepid interest. If you want to know where I prefer to shop, you need only ask human. Oh shit. The others whip their attention towards Laurel, too. I can't decide if I should be assured by the mutual surprise or if they're all in it together, playing me for a gullible fool. How does he keep doing that? Not that I care. Who needs mind tricks when you've got a body like mine anyway? <laughs> okay, Jacob. <laughs> Hi, Space Time Taco. We are playing First Bite. It is a horny vampire dating sim. I, I am May the Mermaid. I believe you've been in here before. I feel like I know your name. Um, I am a horny person who used to play a lot of Vampire the Masquerade in the 90s. So I'm playing this for funsies and lols. <laughs> And so far, it's pretty horny. <laughs> Evil himbo. <laughs> Ugh. It's called cold reading, and they're no better at it than I am, Illy. Somehow, once again, these three beautiful people are arguing amongst themselves, and I'm left with a moment to ponder my options. <laughs> Sounds good, lol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm here for horny vampires. There's no going back for me. Maybe I can shenazerade my way through this extremely sexy, scary predicament. It's clear to me that we will never settle on who gets to eat me if we continue on like this. You're all just too sexy and cool and clever. I suppose you have our answer, do you? Again, wasting time talking when we could be feeding. I've seen it, Space Time. I have not played it yet. I have been, this is so boring, but I've been extraordinarily busy at work and this is like one of the first time I've sat down and played a game and streamed in like quite a few months. Don't fuck any monsters I wouldn't fuck. I'll be really sure not to like stick my uh, warp drive in their dilithium chamber, okay? Go have fun. <laughs> The massive vampire actually pouts. It actually hurts to be this bored, you know. Okay, well, um, I was thinking that maybe I could ask you three a couple of questions, you know, to get, for me to get to know each of you a little better. That way, we can see who's the best fit to eat me. You're holding Ely and I back for a fucking job interview. I haven't had a job in... He frowns, his eyes squinting, his mouth opening and closing. He seems to be thinking particularly hard about something. He raises his hand and looks to be counting on his fingers, but he gives up after a few moments. Literally, me with math. Laurel inhales and exhales quietly. A hint of smile on those perfect purple lips. <sighs> Absolute treasures, aren't they? Keep talking. 
If they really are the creatures of the night that they claim to be, I'd better continue to think fast. I've survived thus far on wood alone, and I can't let it fail me now. Maybe confidence is the key here. Maybe I can throw them off. Mike, thank you for the resub. Here's we'll look at the lad on the right. <laughs> I don't know what that's from, Mike. <clears throat> I don't know which way to go on this. But I told myself I'm not gonna think too hard. I'm not gonna think too hard, I'm just gonna react. I stand my guard around. Surely I can easily play their game and win them over with a couple of my compliments. Sorry, I didn't eat dinner, so I'm eating some olives. Well, they're sexy vampires. I am unfortunately human, so I need to eat things. There's no way you're not LARPers. Silly, sexy LARPers. I smirk at them, trying my best to make sure it doesn't shake nervously at the edges. Either way, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, Sarah. Certainly an interesting credo to live by. And die. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! You really are quite bold for a blood bag, aren't you? Oh, okay, good. I get another chance. Not dead yet. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Now I'm all stressed. Okay, I'm gonna get a quick drink of water. I'm not gonna put... Oh my goodness. Like as I'm like, oh, it won't be long. Toba's like, let me go outside. I'm really disappointed that my microphone seems to be cutting out. If it cuts out again, let me know. I will, I don't know, switch audio sources. Okay, whew, back, back, back.
Elias, clearly on a different page than Laurel, and Valeria entirely flexes his big, beefy arm. Very Trogdor of him. I just can't believe you think that humans could ever have muscles like mine. Valeria narrows her eyes at me and Elias palms his fist. He looks pretty keen on ripping me to shreds. Really? Not yet. A moment of raw tension passes. This better be as fun as you seem to think it will be, Laurel. I can think of a million better ways to spend my time. <laughs> Laurel pointedly ignores her. Tell me. What exactly Hi, drove Zach. you to fling yourself into this pit of vipers, human? Elias grumbles. God, it's so boring when you play puppet master. I'm over it. Enough talking. I'm taking it to my... No, no, don't kill me. I need to bang. This is horny jail. I have the boinks. A look passes over Valeria's face like she suddenly reoccurs. I, mean, I was starting to read and I see I'm here for horny dreams and boinks so I got distracted um I don't know if all of y'all had noticed but when you subscribe there are five one two three four five uno dos tres cuatro cinco un deux trois quatre cinq five new emotes very happy to give them to you Mike is the enforcer of Honey Tail tonight. <laughs> he can try. <laughs> so one of my favorites is the third one in there that you posted, Mike. I, I told the emote artist, I'm like, I want the Pikachu face, but Tova. I'm like, I want the what Pikachu face. And I thought that was very well captured. Oh, no pressure, Julia. I was just saying that because I was very happy with the uh, way the emotes turned out. There are actually three more coming as well. They just weren't ready on time because the woman, who is extremely talented, um, had a unexpected personal thing come up and she felt really bad that she couldn't have them all done. And I was like, no, it's fine. Just give them me the ones that you're like done with. And yeah, more's coming. That's the TLDR. Oh. <laughs> you suddenly don't want to hunt her now, Illy? Elias grumbles. Come on. A hunt can take many forms, Elias. Ugh. I'll make it fun for you, Illy. <laughs> Even let you have the first bite. I did not consent to that. <laughs> the beefy vampire remains unconvinced. Elias perks up a bit at that. Humor me, and I'll hand over that extra special super rare wiggle ad spread from the 1992 party down edition of glow rods weekly are we talking about the werewolf rave again i think the werewolf rave is making a comeback that does it the uh, one with the uh Yes. And the... The way he bounces! Oh my god, I don't even like him, and there's a little part of me that's like, ooh, muffin. But yeah, while I'm thinking of it, everyone, Lord Zath is a wonderful, partnered, World of Warship streamer. He has been so kind as to come and hang out here tonight, despite me not streaming in about nine fucking months. So uh, if you want some consistent quality content, consider going to see Zath. Yes. 
Nightly excretions! They said nightly excretions! I haven't been this excited since I found out about five minutes ago that Klingons have two penises and it's canon. Fine, human. Check this shit out. Thank you, Osab. <laughs> Whoops. I'll also take the liberty to remind you that you had those muscles when you were alive. Yeah, well, uh... Can a human do this? This is a reference to something, and I, I feel it, like, pinging in the back of my head. Shit. <laughs> the way he went down! <laughs> like a fucking circus seal. This motherfucker is planking. Get on my back, Coral! You too, Val. Oh, lordy. Fuck. I wonder if he does this when you're trying to romance him. Oh my god, you're right. I called him Jacob earlier, but you are so right, Sith. <laughs> watch. Okay, I'm being told to watch. The night is progressing. <laughs> he begins doing push-ups with one finger. What the fuck is going on? What is happening to me? One second I'm practically begging for my life and the next they're trying to impress me with their talents? I don't know what to think as my mind boomerangs from terrified to fascinated to enthralled. This certainly isn't what I had in mind of all the times I dreamed about watching three hot vampires ride each other. I'd be lying if I said this was exactly what I expected. I'm sorry to tell you that everything you've learned from your insipid modern media is likely wrong. <laughs> Laughable at best. Everything? Oh, they're back! The horny's back! <laughs> okay, we can just keep these two. Elias can go do push-ups with his penis. Laurel and Valeria dismount, and Elias huffs as he stands to join them. Oh, that means in this click he's going to pop up. But let's watch. Let's watch and appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick! A hot mess of sweatiness. <laughs> yes, everything. I have so many questions. Oh, I don't want to ask them any of these questions. These are stupid. Um. None of these are sexy, but I think the sexiest of all of them is holy water because it involves wetness. So we're just going to go with that. Holy water is consecrated by the church. Does it work? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Patrick. We, you and I, we're in the same horny jail together. It's like, <laughs> you're stuck in here with me. <laughs> you know? That's my horny stream. All it does is get you wet. The game went there too! I can't. 
I can't. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Okay, but what about coffins? Well, I look like I sleep in a coffin to you. Who do you think I am? Fucking Nosferatu? Me? Now hold on a minute. Are you saying Nosferatu is real? <laughs> yeah, I just skipped it. I can't deal with it, Patrick. It's it's not upsetting. It's it's overly stimulating. <laughs> In a way, I suppose. Dracula is very real, and Nosferatu was based on him. So you know, I actually knew Dracula personally. Vampires might not age, but the way that Laurel and Elias seem to wither at the prospects of listening to her tell another story seems to snap sap a few centuries off their infinite light span. Oh, I know, I know, Patrick. Nice. I've been having problems. No king of darkness thing. Mike has but been the warden. To realize that he's far too invested in the wrong kind of impaling. <laughs> Mike has just basically been standing here and boinking me every five minutes. <laughs> so I am already a Laurel stan. Laurel is the non-binary legendary liege to my left. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Laurel is just... Uh. <laughs> uh. Laurel is so sexy. They make me get a double chin. Like, I'm just like... Uh. <laughs> Laurel turns me into a meme. Oh. oh, such a waste. Well, wait, wait. You had sex with Dracula? Oh, well, of course I fucked him. I'm not stupid. Oh, he's six foot seven and built like a god. <laughs> yes. It's like when they're so sexy, you have to retreat into yourself, and you get that like you 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 turn yourself into an emote. <laughs> Did you not see how hot he was in cat? I have a lot of thoughts about Castlevania, but I've never seen the anime. I'm old enough that it's like OG video game Castlevania land, but like. Preteen, teen, late teen, May was uh, basically a whore for anything vampire. Why am I acting like it's in the past? It's not in the past. I just got really quiet about it during the Twilight era because nobody needs to validate that. I'm just saying, it's unfortunate that he showed more interest in skewering his enemies than me. And I'm not going to beg any man, Dracula or not, to pay me attention. <laughs> My mind is officially blown. Okay, now I have to ask, what exactly is the difference between vampire sex and human sex? Oh, you poor creature. You have no idea. It's better than your inadequate human mind could ever possibly imagine. We can physically see lust spiraling off of bodies like smoky tendrils can taste the pheromones that linger on the tip of gasping tongues. Minute by minute, this becomes less safe for work. <laughs> Patrick. Whew. It rules! My heart starts racing, and then... <laughs> Oh, 
Dinner? Yes, that would be you. Sends a good garnish. I am known to be pretty tasty. Oh, my urge to kill it is dissipating. This human has no sense of self-preservation. <laughs> hmm. As I stare into three sets of wide scarlet eyes, I feel like I'm standing on the precipice of something. Something terrifying and life ruining. But my heart is racing like I've just won the fucking lottery. I think back to my dream. Was it premonition? Was it the universe predicting my untimely death at the hand of these three monsters? I want to play with her. Make it last. Okay, Laurel, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. And they step forward again, on just the edge of too close. Their hungry gaze roams my body, like they're sizing me up for a feasting. The eagerness inside me awakens, stirring curiously, and it takes every ounce of my remaining willpower to not tip my throat and surrender. Fuck this. I want to kill him right now. Whew, you're killing me. Killing me. Killing me. Killing me. I can't deal with this. I'm thirsty. <laughs> I need a moment. Can I call a friend? Can I get adult support? Oh. That being said, I wish there was a way to like temporarily ban someone. I wonder if I could temporarily ban something. Someone from my chat room, because like part of me is low key paranoid that this will be like one of those streams my dad pops into. If anyone sees the mer dad in my chat, just like scream abort. All right, because my dad already knows I'm pretty fucking weird, but he doesn't need to know this. <laughs> Although he did one of his first streams, like I mentioned before, he did come in while Iron Bull was spanking me, and I'm like, hello, father. I am the fruit of your loins. <laughs> Look at the majesty you've created. <laughs> this thirsty bitch. And I call it. And in an instant, Elias is racing towards me. His outstretched arms grab my shoulders and we topple over. As I hit the floor a second time this evening, I feel a very real sense of deja vu wash over me. He licks his lips before bearing his cruel fangs. Yes. Wait. <sighs> Am I gonna get all three of them? Did I play did I win this game? Did I win it? Tell me your name. Phoebe Amsel. Well now. Laurel here seems to have taken a liking to you. So that means you have one final, a uh, final chance to plead your case. Good luck, and don't fuck it up. We love a RuPaul reference. Okay, but like sidebar, later on, we're gonna have to have a very serious conversation about the fever dream that is UK versus the world on Drag Race. Like, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. You're probably wondering how I ended up here. <laughs> this isn't exactly what I had in mind when I left my house earlier this evening on the lookout for adventure. Though it might be a situation that has played out in more than a few of my wicked fantasies, I have a terrible feeling I won't be getting the unusual happy ending, I imagine. No, this definitely doesn't feel like I'm running off into the sunset with three super ripped, super hot vampires with a gentle breeze throw blowing through my hair deal. <laughs> Ami! Ami! Pointing out the real things. 
Maybe they'll prop me up on the sofa when they're done draining my dry. <laughs> I don't know if I, they mean like blow up doll or like weekend at Bernie's. Like I am so confused by this sentence. <laughs> okay, focus, focus. Get back to the script, girl. Maybe they'll prop me up on the sofa when they're done draining me dry and I can't, I can't say that word. Okay, so I was watching an episode of We Like to Watch and I heard one of the most crass, sexy things in my entire life and I don't want to paraphrase it incorrectly, but I don't remember it exactly. God, it was Trixie Mattel and she's like, I just want him in my mouth and I will peel him off like a chicken wing like come out bone dry and I was just like fucking dying for like 10 minutes because that visual of sucking all the meat off a chicken wing okay what do you put in people's mouths and then suck off do we need a diagram I love how pure you are minor I love how pure you are Oh, you don't, you've never like sucked the meat off a chicken wing? <laughs> like, okay, I'm, you know what? It's fine. I like hot wings. They're delicious. Never mind. Um, <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Don't eat wings with me, okay? They certainly seem like the type. Focus, Phoebe. Elias, who still has me pinned to the floor, is staring me. Okay, I'm all, I'm all flustered now. All right. <coughs> Elias, who still has me pinned to the floor, is staring at me, a frown pinching his brow, and I wonder if maybe he can hear some of the weird shit currently swirling around in my brain. Valeria, still hovering close enough that I can smell her sweet perfume, grows more menacing by the second in Laurel. Quiet, contemplative, terrifying Laurel is wearing a smirk that could kill you from a hundred yards away. They're leaning against the wall, watching the whole thing go down from a safe distance. It could be worse. Maybe. If they want me to tell them why they shouldn't kill me here and now, I'd better put my back into it. This game is so 90s. Like, it's all 90s hip-hop and Vampire the Masquerade and LARP references. I love it. It makes me feel not old. <laughs> Says the woman who just turned 39. Shows the smirk, though. I know. I wouldn't be able to deal, though. Oh my god, I just remembered that there was a vampire LARP where I played a Malkavian, which now at this point is very politically incorrect, and I know that they've done a re whole reimagining of the Malkavians because mental illness is not a character trait. Um, but I did play an Osferatu romance writer who would get like super fixated on people and then ultimately like put them in torpor and have like psychotic tea parties with their bodies. This is oddly making me remember of that. No way I would have guessed 35. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Thank you for gifting a sub to Ami. I mean, Ami, thank you for gifting a sub to... To Patrick. Whew. I can't focus anymore. Between the thirsty Star Trek talk the Garrick video, discovering that somehow I missed in Discovery that Klingons now have two penises. I've been shit rocked this entire evening. I can't even deal. Okay, so um, Miner was talking about Garrick, and I was um, 
No, you're just talking about Deep Space Nine in general. And I was like, I'm really glad that the internet and people in general, um, we've we've come to terms with the fact that DS9 is extremely horny. Like Keiko and O'Brien are polyamorous, and they have um, ongoing interspersed relationships with both um kira narice and uh julian julian is also in a relationship with garrick uh garrick instills bisexual panic and uh so there's this video of basically the first scene where garrick and bashir meet and uh there's all these subtitles there osab has got it for you there you go Oh, do they kind of work on the redundant nervous system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they can pee with both of them at the same time, which means they can fuck with both of them, which opens up a whole, 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 whole new world of fan fiction that I didn't know could possibly exist. Yeah, you know, Zath, you know. <laughs> Garrick and Cork arguing over. There was even a whole conversation about which DS9 character they would ship me with. <laughs> There, there was a lot. It was, it was so genius. It's so, it's the benchmark for comedy gold for me. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> as a writer, I'm notoriously good at bullshitting. Or as ghosting user Monsterfucker69420 commented, presenting a fantasy that has people desperate for more. I need to figure out how to convince them not to rip open my throat and suck my life away. Oop, didn't mean to do that. And if I fail, honestly, it wouldn't be that bad either. I'd like to go out in service of something I love. And then I have a light bulb moment. A fucking terrible, ill-advised, monumentally stupid light bulb moment. Wait! Elias and Valeria pull back quickly as if struck, their heads tipping to the side in the same way a dog would look if you shook a treat box. <laughs> Laurel just huffs a laugh, but doesn't look like they plan on stopping me from pleading my case. I have to wonder if these three ever manage to have a fresh meal. These are dumb options. Game. Give me more. I want to go out and service something I love specifically hot. Hey, if I'm going to die, that is definitely a way I want to go. Kill me, make it horny. Putting that on my tombstone. Like, I remember everyone was all a titter in, like, the 90s when there was that Madonna movie, what was it, Body of Evidence, where she fucks a man to death, and I was like, no, that's legit. If someone wants to kill me, definitely hide my heart medication and fuck me stupid. Like, that sounds... Like a way better way to go than 99.9% .9 of the other ways. Okay. I have a proposition for you. Say I do end up with all the bargaining chips. What exactly do I want? I'm a paranormal writer. Am I just content to live with, leave with the only memory of this insane night, trying to do it justice in my writing? Or do I want something more? A souvenir? A trinket, maybe? Or... We're waiting. Fuck it. These are vampires. Clearly, immortality must be on the table here. I take a deep breath. What would I have to do to convince you to make me like you? to turn me into a vampire. <laughs> Elias bursts into laughter immediately, which I think is really great for my ego, if not unexpected, actually. But when I tear my eyes from his doubled over, hulking form and look at Valeria and Laurel, they seem to be intrigued. <laughs> Death by snoozoo. This is why I can't look at chat. I'm like, I can either do dramatic readings, which Sometimes I feel silly, but people apparently like, so I'm going to keep doing them. <laughs> and then I look up and it's like, snow, snow. 
But like honestly, as a five foot nine woman who wears heels and is occasionally like six foot two, tall Amazonian women's fucking people to death. Yes. My brand. I know, I was kind of hoping that he would be a little more himbo-y. I always like that they occasionally just throw in some like shitty dude in a dating sim where they're like, hey ladies, you're used to men being assholes and treating you like shit. Sorry, I shouldn't say ladies, that was stereotyping hey people who are attracted to men <laughs> here's someone who's gonna treat you like crap so you can get totally lusty for him as is real life <laughs> i mean that tracks xander was actually super toxic <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. A really good one. I forgot humans could be so funny. Talk. Ooh. I mean, I'd be stupid not to ask, right? I've literally dreamed of having an opportunity like this my whole life. Can you blame me for taking the risk? You're going to kill me regardless, I think. Valeria shrugs and looks at Laurel. The human isn't wrong. Elias snaps his head from side to side quickly, looking between his two comrades like they just grew horns. Wait, are you actually pausing right now? Why aren't we chowing down? Bimbro. <laughs> So if you really want this, convince us. Literally, like, so, if you're a youngin', plug your ears. If you don't want to hear a little about kink, plug your ears. But like, I'm not into like abject humiliation, but like this level of like slight interrogation and like obviously a power dynamic, like, I'm feeling a type of way, friends. Feeling a type of way. This constant, like, convince us, prove us. Oh, whew, whew, whew. <sighs> My mouth falls open, then closes. Open, close. Right. <laughs> I, I can do that. Shit, fuck, what have I done? I feel Elias's grip on my shoulders loosen as he swings his leg over top to straddle me. Reluctantly, he sets me free and I instinctively sit up, scooting onto my knees, scooting my knees onto into my We're chest. Expecting some good entertainment this evening. <laughs> Just the color of the handkerchief. <laughs> I used to have a poster that was like the cue for handkerchiefs. I don't remember all of them. I remember like five of them. Though I'll warn you in case you haven't already guessed. <laughs> I know, that's it, that's it. I'm like, Elias, Elias is a Jacob James, uh, don't talk too much, but just look pretty and be effective. I gulp, but I can, I can work with that. This is just a game, right? A very stupid, very deadly game but i've been gifted a few more turns to make this work in my favor and hey i've played a ton of games i'll just have to use all of my charisma uniqueness nerve and talent to turn the tables 
judging by the look on their faces, the longer I dilly dally, the hungrier and more impatient they get. And like I already said, and they already confirmed, the odds of me walking out here alive are virtually non-existent. That's more than fair. I pause, letting the words hang in the air, knowing I now have the full attention of the vampires. I use my next turn to stand up, brush myself off, making sure that my stance is as confident as I can muster. They don't need to know that I'm metaphorically shitting myself despite them probably being able to hear my heart screaming into my chest. It's not every day we come across a human who lacks fear when staring death in the face. Is it lacks fear or is overridden by horny? I gotta stop clicking the bar on the bottom. I mean, you see having the settings there. It's smart. It's, it's very visible, but <laughs> oops. Well, firstly, you're all really fucking hot. Valeria rolls her eyes so hard, I think they might fall out of her skull. Okay. Uh, um, what I mean is Vampires are brilliant, fascinating creatures that until tonight I thought weren't fact, but fiction. I studied you, written about you. Why would I be afraid to die when it's literally my Freudian death wish dream fulfillment come to life? There's a lot of blood. Like a ton. A whole body's worth. Bimbro. Oh, it's especially messy when Illy is involved. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. He points at Valeria, and the look she gives him makes me think that she might bite his finger off. Plus, you're not even half as delicate as you think you are. You get sloppy, too. She tends to... <clears throat> turns her nose up at him. I don't know what you're talking about. Billy is right. Remember that couple in Trinidad? Do I? <sighs> she clearly does. I remember walking in on the three of you. It was a complete bloodbath. I'll never forget your face. Don't make me make you forget my face. As I listen to them talk about their past indiscretions, the idea of joining them on a... Oh God, I'm s I don't know how to say that word out loud. Ra raucous? Oof, blood-fueled <laughs> vacation sounds deliciously tempting. Okay, it is a raucous, okay. I wasn't sure, I'm super 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 dyslexic the only reason i can read as well and as confidently as i do is that i am an avid reader but what does happen is sometimes like when it comes to words i don't often say out loud i've said mike explain to them what the different worlds in final fantasy are called for me because they are not called what they're actually called. <laughs> like. <laughs> people will say, oh, like this world. And I'm like, oh, you mean Mim Limsa Limosa? <laughs> and people are like, that's not it. And I'm like, it is to me. Yeah, Limsa Mimosa. Black Betty Thanaland, like, yeah, that, I'm so dyslexic whenever it comes to, like, a fantasy setting, and, um, there are words with, that have no actual meaning, and there's just a lot of vowels, um, weird shit happens in my head, but yeah, it's Limsa Mimosa, <laughs> so now I just have this vision of pirates drinking mimosas all the time, anyways, people make fun of me, <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
So, yeah, if you're ever wondering, Limbs of Mimosa, <laughs> that's me. But, um, yeah, it used to be something that I was, like, really, really, really self-conscious about. And then somebody pointed out to me, they were like, if you have trouble pronouncing a word, whether it be because you haven't heard it out loud or whether it be because, like, you are dyslexic and your brain just sort of formulated its own new word, like, don't be ashamed because that means you learned it from reading, <laughs> you know? And I was like, oh, okay. And I tried to reframe it in my mind. But I am really dyslexic. And I, I've, I have learned to compensate for that in my life. But um, sometimes I panic when it comes to a word that I haven't said out loud before because I'm utterly convinced I'm going to say it wrong. Because I usually do. I usually do. All right. <clears throat> I muster up as much willpower as I can to keep my voice steady. I'm serious about what I said. I want you to turn me. I feel three sets of eyes narrowing in on all of my vital spots. Laurel looks me over like a hamster in a cage. They smile at me, and despite reaching their pretty eyes, it still doesn't quite stick. <laughs> I am one exceptionally good at making life interesting, if I do say so myself. I can teach you things like um, gaming, internet shopping, how to not act on Twitter. You might be old, but we're not stuck in the Victorian times. Oh! Maybe you can fix my computer? It's doing that thing that it always does. His face! His face right now! Okay, he's actually cute right now. <laughs> we can talk about your spectacular ability to infect every device we own with porn malware <laughs> some other time, Helios. Wah! Ugh. With a wave of her hand, I feel my words die on my tongue. You think it's something we can easily do? Just turn you. Like how humans adopt a puppy. <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit more involved than that, but okay. Fair. <laughs> None of us chose this life. It's not all amazing Saxon free meals. <laughs> I mean, that's what the brochures say. That's what I'm signing up for. Uh. Valeria steps towards me, closing the distance between us. She takes my chin between her forefinger and thumb, making sure I have no choice but to look at her. Oh, entertaining you and your little idea was fun for a second, but I get bored so very easily and Illy's tummy is going to start growling soon. She leans closer again, her lips brushing my ear. <laughs> hey, I'm always hungry. <laughs> oh, I went down the wrong path. These all suck. Um... I've seen hints of intriguing powers here tonight, 
Things far beyond what I assume to be the norm for any old vampire. The way Valeria seemingly silenced me without so much of a look, and the way I was compelled to walk here in the first place. I want to fuck with people. I want to cause utter pandemonium among the masses to get inside their heads and, you know. It's hard to notice with how practiced they clearly are at maintaining their poise, but I swear I see Laurel's lips twitch. That's all very creative. But what, pray tell, would this utter pandemonium entail? Oh no. <sighs> I mean, saving the world isn't pandemonium. Getting laid. I'm hot, so that's easy. Kill my enemies is boring. I guess I'd start a cult. I wish, Patrick. I don't know, though. Um, this only just, just, just came out, and I don't know how built out it is in terms of, like, expansions or if there's any intention of doing them. Easy. I'd start a cult whose sole existence would be to... No! Baby! Now we're gonna die and it's all your fault. Bitch. People are so easily swayed when looking for a reason to belong. I already have a website full of people enthralled by things that go bump in the night. I'll make sure I'm the only thing they dare to think about. <laughs> a soft hup of laugh escapes Laurel's lips. It's okay, they're amused. I might be okay. I'll take it. Valeria backs down, seemingly content with my answers. There's a brief break in the conversation as she and the others appear to mull over my response. I wait for something, anything, to happen. The silence somehow makes me more uncomfortable than the vampires themselves. I am basic and I have a better idea for what I would do as a mortal creature of the night than Phoebe. Yes, I know. I know. As an immortal creature of the night, there's there's so much, so much I would do. I would not start a cult. Although, weird sidebar, in my high school graduation gag awards, I was voted both most likely to save the world and most likely to start her own cult. So I came up with head canon, canon that I saved the world by starting a cult. So this is oddly and perfectly emblematic of my 90s life. <laughs> I should take out my yearbook. Actually, Patrick, you've seen it. I remember I posted a picture of me in high school with my uniform and you were like, I love doing pitch perfect. And then I snorted my coffee. I snorted my coffee so hard that that sentence is forever emblazoned in my mind. Forever. I try to think of something to say to fill the void. So... Then... There's a fucking cat. There's a vampire cat in the house. Wait. You have a cat? Nasty Dennis. He's not <gasps> just a cat. His name is Nasty Dennis. I look around for this nasty Dennis and see nothing. The quiet, somewhat intimidating meowing continues. Can I see him? Ugh. Is it a ghost cat? If you do see him, it's probably a bad omen for you, human. It's a demon cat. I see, I see. Is he like one of those cats who sits with elderly people in nursing homes before they die? <sighs> nah, I'll probably just shred your jugular. So that's where the nasty comes from. Got it. Right. 
I wouldn't say that I'm enamored, just curious. Isn't curiosity what killed the cat? Valeria then gestures to the gallery wall behind her with a dramatic flourish presenting a portrait with dainty hands. Nasty Tennis is a shaggy white Persian with permanent resting murder face and he's wearing a dashing tiny red bow tie. Y'all called it! Bravo. Bravo fucking vo. Oh my god, how do I react to this? <laughs> you were right, homie! I... You win, you win this game. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Hell yeah. You literally win this game. Hang on, I have an extra code. Where is it? Where is it? Because you fucking called that. Like the fucking goddess you are. I have an extra code in my email. I'm DMing it to you on Discord. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> okay, but Chad, help me figure this out because all of these answers are very unhinged. Because anyone who don't who doesn't like cats, unhinged. I mean, adorable is pretty normal, but pet the portrait. That's all. But that's also a weird. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go be a parent. Go enjoy. Thank you so much for popping by. It was a pleasure hosting you. Um, I'm gonna go with he's adorable. That's a cute ass cat. I love him. He looks so soft. I want to kiss his fluffy, angry little eyebrows. You really do have a death wish. Clearly. Just because you've lasted this long doesn't mean. Oh man, that was a wrong choice. That was a wrong choice. They're all mad at me now. Trying to distract us by using nasty Dennis as a pawn. I'm on to you, human. Well, I don't know what the right answer was, but that clearly was not it. Come on. Right. That whole thing. Shit. I'm not sure how much longer I can hold them off like this. I part... Stop it. I keep right-clicking and I don't mean to. I've partaken in a risky game of breaking and entering, trespassing, and most heinously, I interrupted their game night. And now I'm stuck in a game of my own making, one of life and death. I just can't sit by and hope that they'll start to want to keep me around without putting the work in, especially when it's such an incredible opportunity being dangled right in front of my eyes. Like all good relationships, it's not all about me. I need to know more about them. I need to know what the fuck I'm getting myself into if this all pans out the way I want it to. You've interrogated me, now maybe you should let me ask you some questions. A question for questions seems fair. Laurel winks at me and extends their fingers, my eyes drifting to those sharp, shiny talons. But be careful. Any wrong answers in your innards will make a nice table dressing. God damn it. Why are they so hot? Okay.
There are a lot of things I can think to ask them off the top of my head. Like, do bats make good company, for example? But then, maybe I should use my chances wisely and ask something productive. What do you miss most, most about being a human? Nothing. I'm perfect. Eat it, Elias. Nobody asked you. Go home. I stare at him for a beat, and he seems pretty serious. I expected something a little more profound, not gonna lie. Laurel smiles softly, almost wistfully. Hmm. Music festivals. Music festivals, Laurel? Thousands of bodies sweating out their worries together. Under a cruel but forgiving sun, laughing and gyrating in ecstasy. Laurel and I went to the same raves. Also, Neo from the Matrix. Are there no vampire friendly music festivals? When I decided to do a round robin game of truth and truth with a trio of hungry, sassy vampires, I can't say that I anticipated this one, but I must acquiesce. I can practically feel the excitement lighting up my face. I fucking love LBS. J Dream is undoubtedly my favorite. Not only is he an amazing rapper and dancer, but his production skills are second to none. Is that satisfactory, Laurel? They nod, but I'm not entirely sure if I've made a good impression or not. Before I can ask my next, qu next question, Elias practically bulldozes Laurel out of the way. <laughs> okay, Phoebe. One, how does a three-day hunt in the woods sound to you? Two, how do you like your blood to taste? Three, where is your favorite place to bite someone? Um, I don't think he understands small talk. Four, what are your opinions on swords? Well, someone's eager. Sorry, doggo. Seems okay. Aw, oh, shit. What's up, Mike? When he left. Oopsie tootsie. <laughs> oh man when patrick was here i should have asked if they'd be a reference can you imagine in the middle of a horny stream just like hey can i put you on my cd <laughs> not to brag but i did take several sword fighting classes in college 
His big golden eyes seem to sparkle in wonder. Hell yeah. Whoa, that's awesome. Now, are you quite finished hogging the human illy? Elias pouts and Valeria pats him on the chest. And then she's staring me down, a deadly look in her eyes. My turn. Tell me, if given the chance, how would you try to impress a fine specimen of a vampire like myself? She pokes at one of her fangs with her tongue. It feels like a threat. A sexy one. There was this girl I used to date. And she didn't have overly pronounced canines, but whenever she was like slightly sassy, sexy, and a little horny, she would do this like tongue thing on her canine, and it was just like, whoo, whoo, whoo. Anyways. Most of my strength lies in crafting stories, and Valeria seems like the type to want to be the center of attention. <laughs> yeah, hot vampires. What better way than to woo her than make her the star of her very own epic? Well, I'm a writer, and quite a prolific one. If you respect the opinions of a AO3 reviewers, I could write a story about you, a movie worthy epic about your life. Hmm. It'd be great. We could sit and you can tell me all about your amazing adventures you've had. She nods a little too enthusiastic for someone who tries so hard to project an aura of abject terror. <gasps> Ollie! Oh, Elmi, thanks for <laughs> gifting us up to Ollie. Um, you will enjoy many, many emotes. There are new emotes. I'm very excited about them. There's even a Tova with sunglasses. It's pretty cool. Ah, yes. Val talking about herself. Something none of us have ever heard before. <laughs> you two can piss off. I'm going to be famous. I like that she has double fangs. Well, I mean, most of them do except for Laurel. They, um, yes, you have the table flip too. I forgot I put that one on a low tier. Just like rage. All of these questions, all of this incessant prodding. This is either the weirdest job interview I've ever had or the best speed dating session I've ever been to. I can't tell if I like it or if I love it. Before they pump me for more <laughs> information. <laughs> There's something I'm desperate to ask about. Powers. Abilities. I know they have them and I want to know it all. If I'm potentially going to be a vampire by the end of the night, I should be well informed about what my new body will be capable of. I'm being interviewed by a vampire. I want to know about all the cool vampire shit you can do. Interesting priorities. Though it's a fair question. I suppose. Oh, oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna voice Laurel. Laurel is too sexy for me to voice. The added benefit of near miraculous strength has its perks, but being a walking polygraph makes living in the shadows of humanity that much more entertaining. Hmm. It's hard to choose one thing. But, but why male models? I'm basically good at everything. But if I've got to pick just one... Sharpen senses. I can hear a mouse's heartbeat at the other end of the house. I could smell you before you even set foot in here. Gross. Well, being young and beautiful forever certainly has its perks, but if I simply had to choose one thing, I'd say that I quite enjoy thralling people. Okay, so... 
Valeria is clearly a Toreador. She might be a Ventru, but she's 99% a Toreador. Illy is Bruja. Maybe a Gangrel, leaning towards Bruja. Laurel, I think, is a Tremere. They have that slightly mysticism, interesting intellect thing going for them. So I would say they're Tremere. Or, or they could be one of the Lost Clans, like a daughter of Cacophony. They're all Dracula. That's what, that's what I'm going for. Oh, there's something inherently satisfying about bending people's will before ripping their throat out. You know, there's a... Actually, Ollie, if you were here earlier, you would have known that Valeria has fucked Dracula because he's seven foot two, but he has different priorities and doesn't like to impale the correct things. Well, <laughs> these were all mildly terrifying. That all sounds incredibly cool and fun. It's getting late or early, and I feel the anxiety pangs in my chest as they stare at me with thinly veiled impatience or judgment. I can't quite tell. My quick firing brain is telling me that they're talking about me telepathically or something. The silence is deadly. I've pleaded my case for long enough, and I really can't stand to wait around anymore. It's time. So, did I pass the test? Fuck me. Call me curious, but if you had to choose one of us to be your sire, who would you pick? Clearly, there's only one correct choice. <laughs> this has to be a trap. There is no way that it isn't. If I choose one, would the others pounce on me? If I don't choose, will I die regardless? Even if it is a scheme to get their fangs in my throat, I have no choice but to answer. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to go with Laurel. It has to be Laurel. They've enchanted me with their mysterious ways and their almost mischievous demeanor. I think we could have a lot of fun together. Laurel, I choose you. Pika Pika, I guess. <laughs> Wait. They messed up their pronouns. Well, is that your final answer? Yes, it is. My cheeks flush and I advert my gaze from Laurel, who stares at me quite intently. Apparently, they're satisfied they're the chosen one. You've pleaded your case very well. Oh, oh, did I win? Award, did I win? Do not drop your guard, though. You are far from getting out of this alive. You've arrived at a place of no return. Are you ready to enter hell with me? Of course. Follow me. I trail after them. I do my best to contain my excitement about being chosen. I can't help but think about what's going to happen next. Whew. Okay. I will keep playing, but this is a lot of reading. I'm just going to take five minutes. So get up, get yourself a glass of water, have a nice stretch, do what you need to do. You can tweet about watching me if you're having a good time, make some clips, you know, have some fun. Um, I just, I just need a quick little rest and I will be back. So let's say it is 1021 now. I will be back no later than 1030. I apologize, just I've taken a long break from streaming and I literally don't talk to human beings because I live by myself. So 
I just need a few minutes. No, 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 no. I didn't click it. I didn't click it. Okay, we can leave it like this. We can leave it like this. It's fine. No need to panic. We got this. Okay. Be right back. All right. I was like, what is happening on my phone? Because <laughs> I got a whole bunch of notifications, but apparently it was just my hairstylist that tagged me in a post of my new hair. And apparently people were saying that they like it. So cool. Oop. I'm a mess. Laura tells me to walk, so I walk. I climb the stairs. Okay, why are they messing up the pronouns? Hi, Cal. <laughs> That's quite unfortunate. <clears throat> I wonder if at some point Laurel was not non-binary and they just didn't catch it. Now that we're alone, now that it's really happening, I'm shakier on my feet than I would have thought. Don't lose your nerve now, Phoebe. Possibly, actually. That's a really good point. Just they referred to um, Laurel as they pretty much the entire time up to now. So I'm just a little thrown. But that's a very good point. I should not assume. Sexy immortality hangs just within reach. Reach out and grab it. Welcome to my wing of the house. Please, after you. I inch one foot over the threshold, hastening back as I glance over my shoulder. <laughs> as opposed to unsexy immortality. Like, right? <laughs> A sweat dream. I definitely get the appeal. What are you waiting for? I'm not one for repeating myself. Oh shit. Right. They may not be flashing their fangs, but I'm not exactly safe here. Fuck it. A little fear is good for the soul, right? I edge my way inside. Immediately the door clicks shut behind us. Laurel moves further into the bedroom gliding across the floor with a dancer's grace. I linger against the doorframe, suddenly wary as they take up position behind an ornate chair, their stilettoed black manicure curling over its gilded back. What's this? A few minutes ago, you were overflowing with wonder, with excitement. You wanted my attention. Don't tell me that you're worried now that you're trapped in my creepy lair. Hoping we're really alone now. Privacy is important. What 
Or rather, I should say, they keep none from me. I didn't break in. I nudged an already slightly ajar, ajar door wide open. I returned the attention, my appreciation jumping from that tight leather harness to those nails again. Oh! Thanks, Osab. My bads. They did not make a mistake, they used them interchangeably. That is cool. That's something I'm actually not terribly good at and I need to get better at. Um, even if someone uses multiple pronouns, I have this habit of kind of sticking to one. So that's a good that's a good note for myself. Wowzers, imagine all ten of those sharpened points teasing my skin, threatening to draw my irresistibly sweet blood. A full body tingle overtakes me where I stand. Peculiar and reckless. At least you're not boring yet. Laurel eyes me with an air of inevitability, nails tapping a hypnotic rhythm against gold filigree. Come here then. Have a seat. I nod once. Nothing hard about that. Up close the chair's dingier than expected, gold paint peeling from its carved wooden armrests. I sit down and I instantly tilt my head back. I want to see him, and my eyes meet Laurel's as they loom into view. They're a reversed mirror, their lips hovering in my sightline. You're a feast for starving eyes, I'll admit. I grin, a burst of confidence hiding a hooded flirtiness to my stare. So you do think I'm hot? Hmm. Now, now, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Rude. However, would your tongue still waggle if I didn't think you had potential? I gulp, aware that yes, I do have a face. And yes, my tongue works, though it's starting to feel heavier than usual. I run the tip of it along my lips, drawing Laurel's eyes in the process. Hmm. I'll say that I find appeal in the harmony of your features. I blink a few times. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard a compliment like that before. And I'm not quite sure I 100% understand it. The look on their face says it's not news to them. A lot of time, a lot of languages, and a lot of people eager to taste what my tongue can offer. That... <laughs> okay, now that feels like a hot lava injection straight to the gut. All the steamy, paranormal erotica stored in my head will never compare. What you can offer? <laughs> As in partners? <laughs> I feel their smile and encouraging caress, like the invisible press of a hand at the small of my back, urging me onward. Oh, Fuck yes, this is promising. At least a lot more promising than fangs at my neck. And what about you? Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I cough, squirming in the chair. It's not that I'm inexperienced by human measures. Not to toot my own horn, but I do pretty well when I put my best foot forward. By vampiric standards, on the other hand. 
You don't have to worry. I know what I'm doing. Laurel levels their most intense gaze yet. Do you? It's like staring into the sun, looking up from within their shadow. I have this urge, this compulsion to speak under their enchanting gaze. A feeling that starts in my chest and bubbles up through the wall of my throat. Call it a demented form of acid reflux, I guess. You haven't died once, have you? No, I haven't, Sith. Is that... Is that good? <laughs> I've been told I'm quite skilled at the flirtations. <laughs> Peculiar? Um, that's fair. You don't end up in my line of work without being a little eccentric. Your line of work? I... I run a website for all things paranormal. It's pretty popular, you know. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> Will you write about me on your blog if you survive, little rabbit? Survive? <laughs> I was hoping to do more than that. There's this silence, this quiet that feels intentional. Pointed. Like... I'm being trained to wait. The thought dislodges all fluttery feeling from my somewhat, somewhere between my ribs. The night is young. The look he gives me is like the final beam in a burning house collapsing. Let's see how it grows. Laurel steps away from me, cooling, leaving me cooling in that chair. I watch them pull a desk drawer free and begin fishing around inside with consideration. Oh no, he's in the tickle trunk! <laughs> I'm a bit of a collector, I should say. Once upon a time, there flourished quite the market for those little suckers. Stamp exchanging made for easy victims by way of the Sunday classifieds. Ads in local newspapers. Makes sense. Before internet forums, were, they were one of the few ways to find a fellow eccentric. Kind of genius to turn them into your own personal feeding ground. Wait. You mean to say playing cards, right? In the living room, Laurel looked every bit the poker pro, gearing up to play a winning hand before I interrupted. I can't imagine them schooling nerds with a meticulously customized deck. I always say exactly what I mean to, sweet one. I blink repeatedly. Magic? Or monsters? They don't miss a beat. Monsters, obviously. You're messing with me. <laughs> I struggle to imagine Laurel slamming a purple eye gray dragon cart and nearly rupture several brain cells trying. I might be. Who can say? I don't bother stifling my grin, even if it's not a great idea to tease a vampire. Are you saying... I pause to pull a set of finger guns from my pocket. We're ready. That is time to duel. Ha! Score one from me. I blow smoke from the tips of my fingers and a full reholster them and I see a hint of amusement no matter how hard they try to keep it cool. How many people can brag about nearly reducing a vampire to giggles? I'm s I hate that. When they slide the drawer shut, they do so with a fresh loop of purple yarn draped over their knuckles. 
Laurel rounds on me then, leather rippling against lean thighs with each stride. <laughs> it's getting saucy! Friends, if you are underage, leave this room immediately! <laughs> Perching one stompy lace boot on the spindle, joining the front of my legs, my joining the front legs of my chair, the vampire holds their palm out to me. I give both mine in return. Head empty, I watch as they wreathe my hands in purple string, the color vivid against my skin. First, they guide my middle finger to under the purple segment, hugging their inner wrist of my opposite hand. Their tenderness of their chilly touch surprises me. Then, Laurel repeats the action with the other wrist and middle finger. Satisfied with this new placement, they pull my hands apart without warning. I shiver when the strings snap taut. My palms raise like twin goalposts. The pressure of Laurel's fists around my wrists as they study their, ground, their work grounds me. Together, we admire the purple yarn sculpture levitating between us like some sort of modern art installation. I can't pinpoint why my heart is racing so fast, but the sneaky gleam in Laurel's eyes has my body thrumming with anticipation in a matter of seconds. Never heard of Cat's Cradle. <laughs> Mike called it! Mike, you've outed yourself as a writer of erotica. <laughs> Whew. Cat's Cradle? I glanced down. Oh, right! The kid's string game. <laughs> yeah, Julia! <laughs> I stare back at them, unsure why they seem so unimpressed. Like me, the game is older than it looks. My fingers start to bend as they pinch two intersecting cradle points and fold the string down around itself. Called Aotori by the Edo period lovers, Hai by Hawaiian enchanters, Natsia by my very own mother. The game of string figures has been played far longer than you and I have been alive, little mortal. Morsel. <laughs> Yum. Huh. You learn something new every day. How long would that be exactly? Laurel rolls their wrist with the purple cradle and I release my hold. The string snaps smoothly into a new shape around his fingers. I grin. Cradle transferred. Have a guess. At least 200 years. Ah, you see the vast gully between us two. I squint, trying to recall the meaning of the word, but ultimately failing. So I guess. Qualia? Like. Quality? <laughs> An idle moment passes before they speak again. This is the first figure, the game's namesake, the cat's cradle. Oh, um, right. I know the basics, lots of twisting and bending until one player loses the plot. But the artful symmetry of it, not my area of expertise. I can feel Laurel assessing me, watching where I pinch the string next. I reach for two obvious points of convergence, two purple junctures that feel safe. Hmm. Interesting selection. You're more cautious than one might expect of a free meal. <laughs> Damn it. I hook my pinkies in after reaching deep for a sense memory, the ghost of a cat's cradle match I once played suddenly guiding my moves. Not free, 
I squint with focus. Losing isn't an option. The transfer's got to land. I want things too, remember? <laughs> yes, you want to fuck and die. I haven't forgotten that. My cheeks get all hot as I tug the strings into a new formation between my palms. Fucking die, yeah. And rise again. It may surprise you to hear you're not the first to court our grand ex. I can mine pleasure from the depths of your fragile little throat. Indulge in the fleeting quality of your skin. <laughs> it's getting real saucy here friends um hey -o. what kind of <laughs> I'm like I'm looking at like the paddles over there and like the diplomas on the law wall is like Laurel some sort of medical doctor like what's about to happen there is a sewing kit there is a gramophone there is paddles and ball gags and there is some sort of I don't know uh diamond Hitachi wand over there in the corner like it's just yeah yeah well yeah knitting needles and yarn but also like kind of sewing kitty thing what will you do with your newfound gifts what i'll do huh Execute a convoluted web of machinations. Oh, I like Rubo Gold Machines. I have to I have to go for that. I played so much Incredible Machine growing up, I like cannot be true to the fiber of my being and not pick that. You know, like a Rube Goldberg machine. I'll set up a jungle of gym planks and tubes and roll an egg down the ladder so it knocks over a glass of water that fills up a bucket and... But what is your end game? Um... My end game? I'm not following. Is it the work of art you seek, or the spectacle of the fall? The work of art. A single tree is nice and all, but I care more for the forest, the big picture. And there's just something about moving people around in a way that only you can understand. I don't get to do it often, but having a whole new world at my fingertips, one hidden from sight, I'm getting excited just thinking about it. Mm. Come on, I know it's more than that. The way you played Valeria and Elias downstairs, how you pulled their strings, I might not know all the details, but I do know about Vampire Turf Wars and the Masquerades. Shady deals, intrigues under the fall of darkness, 
Someone like you wouldn't want to just sit around in a creepy house all night. You do more out there in the vampire world than make mischief. Oh no! You know, you're either very foolish or very clever. Okay, maybe fact, I didn't fuck up. Games we play with each other maybe I didn't fuck up. I thought I fucked up. I thought I was gonna die. I tend to refrain from sharing. Rewards? That's what you're angling for, isn't it? A share in the power I've achieved after decades of hard work in this city. That's... hey. Wait a minute, that's not what I... Wasn't it? I'll admit, that's the part I'm not entirely sure about. Only a fool would lay it all out like that, without bringing any real bargaining leverage to the table. Then again, the cleverest among us are often mistaken as fools. As court jesters, you might say. Either way, I'm afraid I've never been welcoming of competition. Oh, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! <laughs> <laughs> Their fingers dropped to my waist. Steady on your feet now. That oozing beckoning has the opposite effect. I stumble backwards out of their grasp, terrified. Don't shrink away. Embrace me. I'll drink from you slowly. Oh no! I got so close! <laughs> well, it's almost 11 where I am, so I think I'm going to go to bed, but, uh, so close, so close, so close. Uh, what I think I'm going to do for next stream is I am going to, uh, get myself back up to that part and then we shall resume from there. I feel like we were so close to the end. Ugh, ugh. Anyways, I might be wrong. But we'll get there. We'll get there. But that is it for me tonight. I am absolutely exhausted. And I have one more really long day of work tomorrow before the weekend. So I am going to bid farewell. It has been four hours of lusty, horny adventure. But uh, I will take my leave of you. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I hope that you enjoy the new emotes. It is very exciting exciting for me to be able to provide them for you and i hope that you enjoy them <laughs> horny stream yeah we'll be back we'll be back next thursday thursday to see if we don't die but i think the fact that we made it that far without dying i'm 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 pretty proud of myself I'm pretty proud of myself. So I love you all. You are wonderful human beings. Feel free to jump in the Discord, although I think most of you are already there. And I will see you next time. Have a wonderful night. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. And I will see you soon. Take care.